Now, you mentioned a little bit earlier about how you, you were in a job and, and, and you didn't feel like, mm-hmm. like, like that was your space. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I believe it was PR, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Um, I think one of the things that's important is that I, I don't come from a family of entrepreneurs. Like my parents mm. are educators. Most of my aunts and uncles have done something in the education space or um, or they're in their respective fields. And so growing up, it was really, you know, you, you work hard, you put in the time, you retire. Um, and so I signed up for the PR track. I thought that I was going to write speeches for other people and <laughs> do press releases to help build other companies. And um, as I was approaching my senior year, of course, I had already started Scholarship Academy at at Howard. And so I was on the weekends traveling to speak and kind of trying to balance what that life was going to be like upon graduation. And DC is not cheap to live in. Um, So I was working at a PR firm. And I think our, our client was something with either platinum or steel. It was like some company that I personally don't care about. Um, And and, um, my boss at the time decided that we were going to crash a conference for some company that was opposing our client. And so we went to the National Press Club. It's 20 degrees outside and I'm (laughs) passing out flyers and people yelling and we got kicked out. And so as as a young journalism major, I was like, wow, I just got kicked out of like the National Press Club, not just any <laughs> establishment, the National Press Club. And I just had this this crystal clear moment and I said, and it's about something I don't care about. No. Um, and I said, what would it look like if I put that much energy and that much gumption and courage into the things that I actually do care about? Like how far could I go? Wow. <laughs> and, and so how long did it take you? Because I, I know sometimes we can have those moments mm-hmm. and it can be so scary. <clears throat> Right. Mm -hmm. Like we say, we we have the epiphany, but oh, my gosh, like, do I really have the ability to survive? How long did it take you to make the decision to leave? Um, I mean, the beautiful thing is it's like it it was at a time in my life where things were lining up. So I had gotten into graduate school. This was my last internship before I decided what I wanted to do with my real life. Um, And I was I was at a crossroads and I said, I can trust myself. I can work on my master's and build this this awesome vision for helping students pursue debt free degree. Or I can stay on this path where I know I hate billable hours. I don't care about platinum and steel. And and I felt so restricted with my creative voice um, in that kind of space. And I just chose me <laughs> and, and never looked back. So I had a startup founder on this show mm-hmm. and he was talking about how like no matter what it is you do, even if it is your life calling, there are going to be a lot of miserable moments yeah. because doing what you love means that sometimes you got to do stuff that's difficult. Absolutely. When you had that moment and you were like, I just can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. How did you know the difference between this is a sign that I'm in the wrong place versus, hey, this is just one of those moments where I just need to be an an adult and accept that everything isn't fun? (laughs) Um, So I I think that for me, the challenge is that I've I've always known that I was different, right? I was set um, uh, kind of on a path to do something bigger than what might be expected, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because of where I come from, small town in West Tennessee, nobody knows uh, much about Jackson, Tennessee. So I, I think that when it hit me that it wasn't a good fit for me, I wasn't worried about the other side of that. Right. Um, I I think that I knew immediately that I wasn't going to. I'm a great writer. Sure. Um, I'm okay at public speaking. Sure. And I had all the fundamentals of what it took to do that job. But there was nothing about who I was that felt comfortable in that space and in that environment. And when I think about the other side and the the needs and just the the pure joy and in my element and and just the opportunities that started to present itself for me doing what I was really good at. And, you know, same skill sets, public speaking. Writing, I created the curriculum, right? Um, engaging with people and helping them build their brand. So I was doing that, but I was doing it for myself and I was doing it for people who needed it the most. Yeah. And I just had to, like, at an early age, trust and believe that using the same skill sets that I thought was going to take me up the corporate ladder could really, really be beneficial to 
people, um, particularly low-income first-generation students, boys of color who are often ignored by counselors in this, in this whole financial aid process. Um, I, and I just thought that the gift that I had to give the world, I owed it to those people to say, no, not that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah.